Hey, what's up folks, how's it going? This is Wadjo, hope you guys are all doing well. So recently, two awesome things came out. One is the new Star Wars Battlefront game on the PC. I've been playing it nonstop for the past couple of weeks. And second is the new AMD R9 380X. And in this video, we're gonna bring everything together. We're gonna be building a awesome, powerful, yet affordable PC that can play Star Wars Battlefront, pretty much max out settings. And we're gonna also use an AOC FreeSync monitor that can do 144 hertz refresh rate to really push the system to its maximum capabilities and really experience a fluid and dynamic gaming experience like no other. So specifically this system is going to be based around the Asus Strix R9-380X alongside one of the best price to performance ratio CPUs you can get the AMD FX8370. So we're going to be doing a full-on build guide and you can skip ahead to a specific part of the video. We're also going to be doing some benchmarking at near the end of the video. So without any further ado let's get right into building this thing. Okay, so let's start with breaking down the parts list of this computer. Now, we already mentioned that in terms of the CPU and GPU, we're using the AMD FX8370 and the Asus Strix R9 380X. Now, we're going to be doing some major overclocking, so we need a pretty capable CPU cooler, but we don't want something that will completely break the bank. So the best option is the Cooler Master Hyper T4. This is a fairly large heatsink with a 120 millimeter fan, and this should provide enough heat dissipation in order to maintain a stable overclock at at around 5 gigahertz. Now in terms of our motherboard, we're using the MSI 990FX-A gaming series of motherboards designed for the AM3 Plus socket. This motherboard is a great foundation for our CPU. It's really competitively priced, usually around $130. The Northbridge is comprised of the 990FX chipset and the Southbridge is based around the SB950 chipset. There's also full USB 3.1 compatibility, which can give you up to 10 gigabits per second data throughput, as well as pretty good integrated audio. Now in terms of memory, we're keeping things simple. We're using 8 gigabytes at G-Skill DDR3 memory clocked around 1600 megahertz, really economically priced. And for gaming, we don't need a lot of RAM, so it's perfect. Hard drive, we're going to use just a 7200 mechanical hard drive, one terabyte from Seagate. Again, really economical and perfectly fine for most gaming applications. For the power supply, we're using a 750 watt EVGA power supply. It's 80 plus bronze certified, so great efficiency. It's also half modular, which is definitely going to save you a little bit in terms of price and plus with 750 watts you can easily add another 380x down the road and further improve your gaming performance now for the case we're going to be using the corsair 100r this is a mid tower case and we're using the silent version and for around the 50 dollar mark this is definitely a good choice for anybody that wants a quiet and powerful gaming pc that has more than enough capabilities for expandability later on in the future now as per usual all you're going to need to build the entire pc is just a simple phillips head screwdriver pretty much nothing else. And secondly, you want to make sure that you're relieved of any extra static discharge so you don't damage any of the components. And the first thing that we're going to do is install our CPU on the motherboard. We're going to place the motherboard right on top of the motherboard box so we have a good solid foundation to start with. And here we're going to locate the CPU socket and lift the release lever of the socket itself. And once that is done, you can take the CPU and uh, you want to locate the uh, triangle located on the top right hand corner and align it with the triangle located on the socket itself and then you can lower down the CPU right into the socket gently and lock down the CPU using the release lever back into place. After that we're just going to install our DDR3 memory. We only have two sticks to work with and we're just going to install them in directly into the slots labeled 1 and 3. Once we're all done with that we're going to install our CPU cooler. We're going to apply the thermal paste supplied with the cooler itself directly onto the CPU so we have a nice medium between the cooler and the processor then we're going to take the heatsink, remove the plastic film that's covering the surface of the cooler, and then we're going to insert the AM3 Plus retention arm directly in the middle of the cooler. You have some notches to guide you through the process, and then we're going to take the entire cooler and center it directly on to the processor, and we're going to lock everything down to place in the little notches uh, using the retention arm. Thereafter, we can connect the power to the 120 millimeter fan on the cooler directly into the fan port labeled CPU fan. Okay, so now we're going to prep the PC 
case and the PSU. We're going to insert the PSU directly at the bottom of the PC case and we're going to screw everything with the uh, screws provided either in the case or the power supply box. And since this is a half modular case, you already have the main motherboard, CPU, and one six pin already connected. All we need to do is insert another six pin for our GPU and one SATA power connector to power our hard drive. Now with all that done, we're finally ready to uh, insert this motherboard directly into the PC case. And with the PC case, we want to make sure that we have our front I.O. plate inserted correctly into the rear portion of the case. Thereafter, we can gently lower the motherboard directly into the case. And luckily with this case, the motherboard standoff screws are all pre-installed from the factory. So it's really easy to basically screw in the motherboard directly into the case. And by the way, your PC case actually came with all the screws you need to get everything installed properly. Next, we're going to install the front panel connectors and refer to the motherboard quick start guide for the exact orientation of each front panel connector so you're not confused on how things connect properly. After that, we're going to install our front panel headphone jack and microphone, as well as the USB 3.0 connection at the front of the case. And while we're connecting that, might as well install some of our case fans to the motherboard. We simply want to connect the fans to any port labeled system fan. Next, we're going to install the main 24 pin power connection from our PSU to the motherboard. Then after that, we're going to connect our uh, power for our processor, which is an eight pin connector. A little bit tricky to reach, but just take your time and you will get it. Now, since we have all that done, we're finally ready to install our GPU. Now we're going to install into the top slot and we're going to remove the PCIe covers that corresponds to that specific slot. And once you have the covers removed, we can uh, directly insert the graphics card into that PCIe Express slot. And then we're going to screw the GPU directly onto the case so we have everything nice and secure. And after that, we can simply connect the two six pin power connectors from the PSU to our graphics card. And our last and final step is going to be installing the hard drive into one of the toolless hard drive cradles. And then we're going to grab a SATA cable connected to the hard drive to an available SATA connection on the motherboard. And last, we're going to connect SATA power directly onto the hard drive. And uh, once all that is done, congratulations, you can do a little bit of cable management, but your system is functionally ready to roll. You can install whatever operating system you like. I'm going to go with Windows 10 in this instant. And now let's finally get into the system configuration. Basically, in terms of the overclock, I achieved a 5.0 one gigahertz overclock at uh, the core voltage set to about 1.475 volts. And you can see my settings over here. My base clock is set to 204.7 and the multiplier is set to 24.5. And based on my experience so far, this is a fairly stable overclock, although it runs a little bit hot at times, especially if you're going to prime 95 it for many, many hours. So if you're going to use this specific cooler, you probably want to set it to anywhere between 4.7 to 4.8 for normal every day to day usage. But just for our benchmarking needs. We're going to push it to 5 gigahertz since this is pretty stable for most gaming applications and for quick CPU 100% bursts. Now the first thing we're going to take a look at is my Geekbench 3 results. Looking at the single core and multi-core score, you can see that it's certainly impressive. Uh, basically getting over 15,000 points on the multi-core side at just around 2,900 points on the single core side. Certainly the single core side it's not as capable as some of the Intel processors, but in terms of the multi-core specifications and capabilities this is up there with even the latest generation Core i7. So now moving forward, let's finally take a look at the gaming performance. Now we're going to do a synthetic benchmark using 3D Mark Fire Strike. And with our factory overclock on this GPU, we scored about 7,845, which is somewhere around 5 to 10% faster than the equivalent R9 380. Now moving on to our real world benchmark, the real question is, how does it do playing Star Wars Battlefront? Well, on pretty much maxed out settings at full 1080p resolution, Resolution, we're getting a solid 63 average FPS, a minimum rating about 53 frames per second, and a maximum of 75. So in terms of playability, this is definitely a big two thumbs up for me. And with a 144 hertz free sync monitor, the experience is absolutely sublime and really fluid. Now just for fun, at maximum settings, Fallout 4 gets a solid 58 frames per second, minimum 42 frames per second, and a maximum of 79 frames per second. So that's definitely excellent as well. And lastly, I booted into Call of Duty Black Ops 3, pretty much maxed out detail settings at 1080p. Average FPS is 46, minimum is 27, and maximum is 70. So again, definitely not too bad. Uh, the hardware optimization probably will only go up from here as driver support gets better for different gaming titles, but I'm very satisfied with the performance that we're getting out of this PC. But really, other than that, that's really it. As you can see, the system is very capable at playing most of the modern titles that uh, you're going to 
and experience out there in the PC market at very high frames per second, especially if you're going to game at 1080p using a FreeSync monitor. It's also very capable at Quad HD resolution and some games you can even play at playable frame rates in a full 4K resolution, although it's really optimized for a FreeSync monitor like setup. But if you have any specific questions, definitely let me know. Check out the description for all the parts we use uh, to build this PC and a big shout out and thank you to AMD for providing some of the core essential parts. Without them, this build guide wouldn't be possible. So big shout out to them. Give us a thumbs up if this video helped you out in any way and we'll see you later. Take care. Thanks for watching.